there are some painful moments in the book, and they had, I know they had to be, and one is about your brother, Jack. Jack uh, was two years older than you, mm -hmm. and you really looked up to him. Tell me about Jack. <clears throat> He's very strong. This, he is, was, uh, this is Jack. Yeah, he was muscle-bound. He, he worked out, and he was in great shape for 14 years old. Jack had been called to preach. You know, being called to preach in, the, in our religion means that you have dedicated your, yourself to be a minister. Every night he was at the table with his library reading the Bible. And uh, it was a great influence on me. And it was a big, big loss when he died for me, you know. And it was hard to get rid of. In Betty Ford, I went through a, a thing called grief therapy to dissolve and, and, and get rid of any unresolved grief that I might have for anybody. And I went through that after for Jack about, about 40 years past the fact. You said that you still dream of Jack, but mm -hmm. you don't dream of Jack as a 14-year-old, which is when he died. Mm -hmm. You dream of him as an old man. Yeah, he's always two years older than me down through the years when I would dream of him. He was, uh, his, his beard is gray now, his hair is gray, and uh, he's always been there. He's aged with me. What happened to Jack? Jack was hired by the uh, school teachers to work at the shop, the agriculture building, on Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon, uh, splitting logs to make a fence post over with a, with a, a tabletop saw. And uh, the morning he went down there, my mother felt like well, something was going to happen. He did, too, and I did, too. And he, I started begging him to go fishing with me. But uh, we finally walked out, and Mama came out and stood on the steps and watched us go. I've never seen her do that. <clears throat> and we're going down the road almost to the place where I'm going to stop and turn and go to the river where I'm going fishing. And I brought two fishing poles. I begged him to go fishing with me instead of work because I didn't like the way he felt, you know. He started imitating Bugs Money. And I said, I'll see you later, Doc. And he kept going on this way, and I went this way. And he said, what's up, Doc? What's up, Doc? And as long as I could see him, he was saying that to me. I got to the river, and it was the worst day for fishing I'd ever come to. And I, I lay down on the bank and stayed lay there probably two hours, and then got up and headed back home. I get back, got back to this junction. <clears throat> My father came up in, a, in a, the preacher's car and told me to jump in. He said, and throw your fishing pole away. And I knew something really bad had happened. And I asked him, and he said, Jack has been hurt on the table saw cut here, and uh, there's no hope for him. It was a pretty heavy time for me. And he died shortly thereafter. Mm -hmm. Eight days later. Uh, in your book, you, you recount the fact that he saw heaven mm -hmm. as he was dying. Yeah, he and he, and uh, I believe said to your mother, can't you see it? Mm -hmm. Something to that effect? Yeah. <clears throat> My dad came into the room where I was at 6.42 a.m., May 12th, 1944. And uh, I heard him praying and crying. And I was in a hospital room, and the doctor let us stay there and sleep. <clears throat> and I said, what's the matter? And he said, let's go gather around the bed. He's dying. So we went in there, and he was, for the free, he'd come out of a coma. He's so lucid, and he's told everyone of goodbye, you know. <clears throat> and then he closed his eyes and said, Mama, can you hear the singing? You see the angels? She said, no, I can't. He said, I do. Oh, wow, beautiful. And then he died. You, does Jack still appear in your dreams often? Mm -hmm. Very often, yeah. And I guess it took a long time to move on. It took a to long move time. On. Yeah. You know, the next day was a funeral, and then the day after that was Monday morning. And it's amazing, when I remember it now, that my mother and all my brothers and sisters and my father went to the field, went to the field to chop cotton. And I would see her fall into her knees and crying and praying God to give her sustaining grace to go through it, which he did. She'd get right up and start back to work.